brilliant authors. Today I am going to share a method to come up with metaphors and similes that can enrich your writing and I think this is going to work for you even if you think you're not one of those writers who really writes metaphorically. I am Fran Donovan. I am an editor at a publishing house by day and an author by night. Go ahead and subscribe if you aren't already. I share videos about writing every week usually on Monday, sometimes on Tuesday. It's really nice to have you here. This video is part of the Blank Page to Final Draft program, and if you are doing the program, you are working on the second half of your novel and just trying to hit your weekly word count. Now, metaphorical writing is something that you can work into your draft now. It's also something you could add later in edits, or maybe you're writing metaphorically already. It's just another tool in your toolbox, and I wanted to talk about it today. I actually, I first talked about this method for making metaphors in my book, Master List for Writers, but I wanna give it to you for free. So a few things. First of all, when I'm talking about metaphors, I'm talking about both metaphors and similes, really. You know, it's funny because when I was in grade school, teachers would drill us on the difference between similes and metaphors. Similes use like or as, metaphors do not. Then later, when I was in a graduate creative writing program, nobody talked about metaphors and similes. We just talked about metaphorical writing. And that makes sense because it's all the same thing. It's comparing one thing to another in a creative way. And whether you use like or as or not just kind of depends on how it sounds and how it works in the paragraph or it works in the poem if you're writing a poem. So let's just make sure we understand what we're talking about in terms of metaphors and what they are, comparing one thing to another. I'll give you some examples. So, Amortols, I'm probably saying his name wrong, in Gentleman in Moscow, uh, writes about a bunch of oranges spilling out on a counter. And he compares them to a bunch of convicts when the prison doors open, scattering in different directions to maximize the chances of escape. That is a great metaphor. And you read something like that. And then the rest of your life, when you see oranges spilling out over the floor or on a counter or something, you're gonna think of that. You know, it sticks with you. I love that about a great metaphor. I'll give you another example. So R.O. Kwan in The Incendiaries, actually, Quad doesn't write metaphorically all that much, but she has a few great ones in here. And the one that I really enjoyed was she compared a family sitting in the blue light of a television to drowned statues. Isn't that fantastic? You know, both of these examples are literary fiction, but you can have great metaphors in any genre of fiction. Raymond Chandler, who wrote uh, hard-boiled detective stories, very famous for great metaphors. In one of his books, The Little Sister, I don't have it here with me, he said something like, she smelled like the Taj Mahal looks in the moonlight. Amazing, I feel like I can smell that exact perfume. So no matter what genre you're writing, you can work metaphors in there and it can really enrich your writing. All right, I'm gonna get into the four step process. If you wanna pause and grab a piece of paper and a pen or something like that, you can do that, or you can just listen and do that later. Step one, I'm gonna ask you to write down four or five objects, things, okay? Um, so something like a high-heeled pump, all right? Or a, a geode. You know, I bought two halves of this geode and I gave one of them to one of my best friends who's in another city. It's so pretty. Um, so you write down four or five objects like that. All right, you got them. Step two is for each one, I want you to write several adjectives or descriptive phrases about that object. For example, if you have high-heeled pump, you might write down things like uh, shiny, corporate, sexy, surprisingly comfortable. It really is uh, pretty comfortable. Um, or for the geode, you might write heavy, amazing, uh, multifaceted, sparkly on the inside, things like that. So you write down those adjectives and descriptive phrases. All right, step three. 
You're going to take those adjectives and descriptive phrases and you're going to think of other things that those adjectives or descriptive phrases describe, right? All right, so for my high heel pump, I had shiny. I might write down other things that are shiny. Um, wet pavement, the moon, new cars, things like that, right? Um, so sparkly on the inside for the geode. I might write down box full of tinsel, brain full of daydreams, things like that. All right, step four. So now you take your favorite adjective, your favorite other noun, and you work with it, kind of put it together to make a great metaphor. So let's say I have my high heel pump, my shoe, and I have shiny, and I have new car, and I mess around with that a little, and I come up with something like, in her closet, rows of high heel pumps gleamed like new cars. And that's pretty fun, right? Not true of my closet, by the way. I only have a few of those pairs of shoes. Um, but then you have a whole sense of the character. Or you have the, a geode sparkled like a brain full of daydreams, which is actually pretty great because it's uh, lumpy on the outside like a brain. And that's how you do it. That's how you put it together. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, oh, and I should say that when you play around with this, some of the things you come up with aren't gonna be any good. Some are gonna be just kind of flat or uninspiring or cliched. But if you play around with it, you're also gonna get some good ones. And I think that if you do this exercise over and over, or at least a few times, it will train your brain to start thinking a little more metaphorically. You don't have to have metaphorical writing in your work at all. I usually have a ton in my first draft and then my editor says, you have too many. And then I go back and delete uh, a bunch of them and just keep a few that I really like. If you have questions about this method, please let me know in the comments. I would really like this to work for you. And if you're doing blank page to final draft, good luck on hitting your word count this week. Uh, please like the video. I always really appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching you guys. Have a good week and happy writing.